If you are new in game development industry, whether you are an indie developer or working team, you're probably wondering which tools you should use. There are many categories which you should know about. Perhaps you will ensure which game engine you should choose or where to store your ideas. You also probably don't know which tool you can use to create 3D or 2D graphics, especially there are some programs which helps in pixel art. You might be questioning which tool you should use for creating music or sound effects and you want to choose good between paid or free software. This video is just for you because I'm gonna tell you which programs are the most popular in the game dev industry and after this video you will be able to choose the program you like the most. To make things easier I created timestamps so you can use them if you want to jump to special category or you can just watch the entire video. So let's begin! Maybe you have your favorite engine as well, but uh, I need to tell you, if you are new in game dev industry, that there are two popular engines. One is called Unity and second is Unreal Engine. Both are great, both are used in many commercial projects, but if you are new in game dev industry, I will recommend you to use Unity, because Unity is simply and has a really huge community. So if you have any problem, you could ask on forums or somewhere. Unreal Engine is especially for AAA games. Also, you need to have better support for 2D games, so if you are developing a two-dimensional game, it is better to use Unity than Unreal Engine. Another engine with growing popularity is Godot. It's free and open source engine, and you can use it without caring about licenses. And this is good. Godot also has really easy language called GDScript, which syntax is similar to Python, so probably Godot is a good choice for beginning game developers. Sadly, community isn't as big as in other engines, but it's still growing up, so why don't join it? You should also check Game Maker Studio, RPG Maker or Construct. Actually, I used only the first one, and I like it, it's simple and powerful, but pricing model, if you want to develop to mobile platforms, isn't as interesting for beginning game developers. Okay, so when we already have an engine, we need to choose Code Editor or IDE. If you decided to use Godot, you won't need anything else because Godot has integrated Code Editor inside this engine. But if you choose Unreal or Unity, the default option is Visual Studio, which I don't really like because Visual Studio is huge and slow. Also, Visual Studio is platform dependent, uh, which means that you can use it only on Windows. Yes, there is a version for Mac also, but this version is not fully functional. Mac version of Visual Studio is just monodevelop uh, with some tweaks made by Microsoft. Hmm, monodevelop. How many of you remember monodevelop? Monodevelop was default IDE in Unity sometimes. I really like it. But there are also alternatives like Visual Studio Code, free editor, also designed by Microsoft, which can be customized to use in both Unity or Unreal Engine. Visual Studio Code is really customizable because of extension system, so you can probably choose something for special for you. There are also many tutorials how to prepare Visual Studio Code to use with Unity or Unreal Engine. Just search and check it. And the last but not least is my favorite JetBrains Rider. It's really powerful IDE with very good IntelliSense and ReSharper, which is a system that helps you refactoring the code. You definitely should check it if you are not afraid about spending few dollars monthly on this program, or if you are a student. If you are a student, you can get your free copy. If you play with 3D graphics, there is one choice to you, and it's called Blender. I know there are some other applications like Autodesk Maya or 3ds Max, but many graphics around the world use Blender, it's free, open source program, so why don't use it? 2D graphics is also often used in games, especially for UIs or just in 2D games. There is an option to create raster graphic or vector graphic, and I assume that you know the difference, so I will begin with raster graphic, and there are a few programs. You probably know Adobe Photoshop, who don't know. It's a really good program, but it's paid, and this paid is in monthly subscription, so if you don't afraid on spending some money on this program, you will probably like it, because it's an industry standard, but there are also other programs, 
One page called Affinity Photo is a good alternative to Photoshop because its interface is really similar to Photoshop's, but it costs only once and you can use it a lifetime, so it's cheaper. Also good to know that both of these programs also have mobile versions, which you can run on iPad, but Affinity Photo has exactly the same version on iPad, like in on your PC, where Adobe Photoshop is a little limited. So if you plan to use this program mainly on iPad, you should definitely choose Affinity Photo. There are also some free programs like GIMP, which is used mainly for manipulating images, but it's not as good on drawing. And there is also a second one program called Krita, and Krita is used mainly for drawing, but the manipulation options are slightly limited, so you will probably need both. Second category is Vector Graphic, and again you can use Adobe, Adobe Illustrator, which is industry standard, but you can also use Affinity Designer, where interface is similar to this in Adobe Illustrator, and also Affinity Designer has a better version of mobile application on iPad. If you're looking for something free, you should check Inkscape. This is a really good program to create vector graphics, available also on Windows, Mac and Linux. However, it's sometimes a little glitchy and like to crash, so I decided to use Vectornator, which is a very good free program for both Mac and iPad. And I really like that the same application is created both for Mac and iPad, and it's also look the same on both of these devices, but notice that this application is available only for Apple users, so if you are using Windows, you should probably check another software. When we are on graphics, let's quickly jump into pixel art possibilities, because of course you can use one of the raster program I mentioned before to use pixel art, but there are a few better options, and one of them is Asseprite. Asseprite is used by many indie graphics all around the world because it's a really good program, but it's paid. But if you want to use Asseprite for free, there is an option. This isn't exactly Asseprite, but maybe you heard about Libersprite. Libersprite is free open source program, which was related with Asseprite, and I don't want to talk about licensing here, but Asseprite is something like the next version of Librasprite, where Librasprite is still developed by the community, it's free to use, and maybe it's a good start if you just started in game dev industry. I personally use Pixaki on my iPad, because for me it's better to create graphics on iPad than on the computer, because for me it's just more comfortable. Pixaki is a paid program, but if you have an iPad, you can check it for free, because Pixaki also has free version called Pixaki Intro. There are some limitations, but maybe this will be enough for you. I'm not a musician, I'm just a developer, so don't be mad on me if you are a pro user, because I will recommend software for people like me, so for non-musicians. Let's start with free and very powerful software called LMMS. It's free, open source and runs on every operating system and you can create really good soundtrack with it. I found this program a little bit hard to learn, so I use GarageBand on iOS. And if you have an iPhone or an iPad, you can check GarageBand because it's free application and it's probably good to start with something. like it, you can also use GarageBand on macOS, which is most powerful, or you can buy Logic Pro in the future, which is a really powerful program and where sky is the limit. But those are for Mac users. If you use Windows, you should probably check FL Studio. This is also a paid program, but it's also really good. Maybe you don't know how are sound effects created for games. They are just recorded in the outside or in the studio. Many of them are just mouth sounds. You don't believe me? So how to create them? Just use audio recorder on your phone or PC and use manipulating program to manipulate these sounds. You can check Audacity, which is a free software, or you can use Adobe Audition, which is a paid program. However, I think that Audacity has as much really good plugins that you don't need to buy Adobe. You will probably need a few days to try all these plugins. Check it!
When I was recording this video, I forgot about one very important program, and it's called JSFXR, which is an online implementation of SFXR. This is a really useful program when you want to generate some 8-bit or 16-bit sounds by just a few clicks. And because of online implementation, you don't need to download this program to your computer. We are all done with programming and art, but good project needs good management too. I mean you will need space for have all your tasks noted. This can be just paper, but if you like using applications, there are a few I can recommend you. If you are working in team, Jira or Trello will be good, but if you don't like the board view, you can probably check Todoist, because it's really good uh, task, task management application. But to be fair, uh, there are many applications for managing tasks, so you can Choose whatever you want, especially if you work solo and don't need synchronization between you and your team. And if you want to know which application I use, I can tell you that I use default system app. What? System app for managing tasks in game project? Um, yes, as I said, you can choose whatever you want. And because I'm a minimalist, I like to keep things simple. So I decided to use default app. All I need to do is just a list with tasks describing what I need to do, separated in some categories, and this app is good enough for this. Simple, right? If you're looking for something for creating documentation, I can recommend you programs like Notion or Confluence. Both of them are great, both of them have good pricing for small teams. Mm, they are just for free if you have small team. Confluence is really good if you use Jira or Bitbucket. Notion is good for anything else. But also, you can use whatever you want and, and it's really important to keep these things simple. So again, I use default system app for Notes. I was also using good Notes on iPad, but when Freeform was released, this is enough for me and I don't see any sense for using good Notes anymore. But when I need something more complex or I need to work in Teams, Notion is also a good choice. So I also use Notion, and if you don't believe me, you can check my channel. I created, I think, really good tutorial how to use Notion in game development some times ago. Already prepared assets are really good for prototyping or also for releasing your game, because they can save you really much time. When you use Unity, you should start your research of Unity Asset Store, because there are many cool assets here, also one created by me, and Unreal also have its store with models or something. There are also a few pages you should check if you're looking for music, if you don't want to create it on your own. For example, it's Audio Jungle or Artlist.io or Epidemic Sounds. You can also buy custom graphics or music on Fiverr. I hope I didn't miss something. Write a comment if you have any questions. Hit the thumbs up and subscribe to not miss upcoming game dev related videos. That's all for today. See you soon. Bye.